it's okay. It's fine? It could be louder. Is it fine? Sound check, sound check. Does the, okay. Okay, hi, hi everyone. Um, my name is Alexei Shadrin. I'm CEO and co-founder of Fericity. Uh, happy to start the Finance and Carbon Markets Day at the Digital Innovation Pavilion. Um, and today uh, we're starting with a very interesting workshop featuring our chairman of the board, Andre Chichering who will share his uh, unique experience as uh, the former head of the uh, Green Climate Fund Innovation and Co-Financing uh, Facility. And we will talk today about uh, maximizing the GCF funding opportunities, which I'm pretty sure will be very interesting uh, for a lot of our partners and guests. So without any further ado, I'm... Uh, uh, passing the mic to Andre. Thank you, Alexei. Good morning, colleagues. I hope everybody is fresh after yesterday's Saturday night fever and festivities of the National Day in Dubai. God bless this beautiful country, its wise leadership, and hardworking people who make their best to facilitate our work here at Hope effective, comfortable, and safe. Our presentation today is accessing financing from the Green Climate Fund, opportunities, challenges, and solutions. But before we start, I would like to share with you some of my personal thoughts about what is climate finance today. Definitely we talk about money, sometimes very big money, especially in the context of least developed countries or small island developing states, where the amounts distributed from the climate finance facilities and organizations like the Green Climate Fund create a lot of impacts and definitely trigger important changes in humans' behaviors, practices, and industry development. But beyond that, nowadays climate finance is not only about money, it's about cooperation. Being here at COP28, after so many months of this joint uh, existence, first of all, separated by the COVID pandemic, after that, uh, watching all these dramatic events happening uh, in Europe, and Middle East, some people may become desperate and thinking about what to do next and how to do the things. These questions might not find appropriate answers. In that sense, climate finance, climate projects is a beautiful and rewarding opportunities, rewarding for its participants, rewarding for, for environment and future generation of people who will benefit from the outcomes of the efforts that are financed by the organizations like the Green Climate Fund. So considering this balance between different parts of our human existence here on Earth, where some days we are fighting with each other, but at the same time we are balanced by goodwill and sincere effort of many people from different parts of the world. This is something that everybody should keep in mind while doing climate finance project. And I hope this bigger picture will let us successfully navigate through the intricacies and challenges of the Green Climate Fund financing to the effective implementation of mitigation and adaptation projects. Next slide, please. Um, a few words about me. My name is Andrei Chichirin. I am representing here Ever City, good partner of many initiatives related to transparency and accountability of carbon markets and climate finance projects. My professional background combines uh, legal work at international law firms and uh, 
capital markets experience, both uh, the investment banking and uh, big four companies. Since 2017, I've been working with the Green Climate Fund until recently, and initially was senior project finance specialist in the private sector facility, later on leading innovation technology transfer and co-founding platforms team and energy transition teams at the private sector facility of the Green Climate Fund. My significant experience and practical knowledge uh, uh, of working on the climate uh, finance projects at GCF, I hope will benefit the audience of today's presentation and definitely will give you food for thought to approach uh, interesting opportunities uh, based on the knowledge that I'm about to share today. Next slide, please. So let's uh, set the stage first and talk about the Green Climate Fund. Uh, sometimes even people who are related to the climate projects uh, uh, not really aware what is Green Climate Fund, what its activity, activities, mandate, and history. So in a short phrase, Green Climate Fund is the largest financial institution dedicated to the financing of the mitigation and adaptation uh, climate projects. This is financing mechanism of United Nations Framework Convention of Clim on Climate Change that was established in 2010. The organization became operational in 2014-2015 uh, and currently uh, actively working on a portfolio of projects uh, exceeding 200 approved uh, funding proposals and counting. Uh, Green Climate Fund successfully went through the several rounds of uh, replenishment. And uh, as we all know, yesterday, a big announcement came from the United States uh, that uh, presidential administration is committing additional $3 billion to support uh, Green Climate Fund financing operations. This will be definitely a good support for the projects going forward. And uh, uh, during replenishment, uh, second uh, post replenishment period uh, of 2024 2027, will help to address strategic priorities of the organizations. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a brief uh, outline of. Um, the operational modalities of the Green Climate Fund. Uh, this uh, slide uh, gives you a good snapshot and understanding uh, what are the key principles, not only as some uh, sentences and parameters in the uh, governing instrument, but also uh, principles that have practical implication and uh, impact on the operational modalities uh, and work in progress of the Green Climate Fund. First of all, uh, organization is country driven, meaning that uh, most of the projects uh, are brought to the Green Climate Fund with close cooperation uh, at the country level. It's national designated authorities, uh, local stakeholders, direct access entities, and other interested parties uh, who facilitate uh, development and project uh, uh, funding proposals uh, based on the country needs and uh, country priorities. Another principle is uh, open partnership organization. Green Climate Fund channels resources through the set of accredited entities. There are a few hundred of them already accredited uh, and uh, definitely that process continues. But in addition to the accredited entity, uh, we have uh, another operating modality called project-specific uh, assessment approach. This is, is one of the particular uh, options that is available to the non-accredited entities to try and get uh, one funding proposal to be approved with the Green Climate Fund. Next principle is flexibility in terms of uh, financing instrument. In that sense, uh, GCF applies full set of uh, commercial and non-commercial um, financing instruments 
depending on the concessionality needs uh, and priorities of the specific funding proposals. Green Climate Fund finances projects uh, in the form of grants, sometimes up to 100% of financing from Green Climate Fund alone, loans, equity, guarantees. There are opportunities to structure hybrid instruments, but the underpinning design feature of uh, all this option is concessionality. Green Climate Fund is not interested in the business as usual scenario. Green Climate Fund is not a commercial organization that would be uh, earning money on its asset base. Green Climate Fund provides money on concessional terms, meaning that the interest rates of loans might be low, as low as 0%. Green Climate Fund is ready to finance additional components of capacity building and knowledge sharing with pure grant financing, which is not acceptable for many commercial market players. And definitely uh, for projects, especially in the area of innovation and uh, uh, technology transfer, Green Climate Fund is capable to provide uh, much needed equity as a reliable financing partner with patient capital. Uh, a bit more on that later, but next, uh, let's go to the next principle, and this is uh, balanced allocation. One of the priorities of the Green Climate Fund is uh, uh, derived from the guidance uh, of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which specifically mentions balance between mitigation and adaptation in the climate finance support. GCF projects uh, can be structured as mitigation projects where the key outcomes of the projects or programs are related to the emission reduction of uh, greenhouse gases. Or green climate fund projects can be structured as adaptation projects to increase uh, resilience of the local communities uh, suffering from the adverse effect of the climate change. Uh, in reality, at least at the portfolio level, GCF is uh, striving to maintain this balance. And that is an important principle that uh, should be kept in mind by anybody who is approaching uh, the challenge or task of preparation of the funding proposal and try to uh, find a mix of mitigation and adaptation in so-called uh, cross-cutting projects. Sometimes it's a good solution to uh, let uh, things uh, to be moved forward. Um, another element, maybe briefly mentioned already, is also related to risk taking and patient capital. Again, GCF is uh, funded by the contributions from the, primarily from the developed countries uh, who provide this uh, funding support to the Green Climate Fund in the form of uh, uh, replenishment uh, resources. GCF, um, at least immediately, is not obliged to repay these amounts, although some countries uh, provide funding in the form of loans. But majority of financial resources come in the form of uh, grant financing dedicated to the Green Climate Fund. Therefore, it gives uh, the organization desired flexibility to move uh, this, uh, the most challenging uh, climate issues, uh, supporting solutions uh, through the financing mix appropriate uh, for them. So in that sense, uh, GCF can uh, go all the way up in the duration of its financial instruments to 40 years. Again, 0% uh, interest rate for some loans uh, is, uh, especially in the context of the least developed countries, uh, is acceptable. And uh, equity funding where uh, the partnership with the Green Climate Fund does not trigger traditional issues of the new ventures about dilution of the founders, about the corporate governance, and uh, so on and so forth. This is the package and this is the value proposition of the Green Climate Fund. Cheap, uh, long uh, and effective money that uh, on the other side of the equation, uh, have some requirements uh, of which uh, we will be talking a bit uh, later. Next slide, please. GCF is focusing, as I mentioned, uh, and trying to achieve uh, mitigation uh, and adaptation balance uh, uh, based on the specific result areas uh, that are indicated uh, in its uh, 
uh, investment uh, framework uh, and um, uh, basically uh, guide uh, GCF funding in terms of thematic areas that uh, are uh, are uh, available or eligible for the uh, GCF uh, funding support. First of all, uh, uh, we are talking about mitigation, which is quite easy uh, task. Well, as long as you have established uh, uh, methodologies accounting for the mitigation effects of the project, and that is uh, energy generation, transport, building cities, industries, and appliances forests and land use. Uh, another set of uh, result areas uh, related to adaptation activities of the Green Climate Fund. For that, uh, we are talking about life foods of people and communities, health, food and water security, infrastructure and build environment, and ecosystem and ecosystem services. Again, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the best uh, scenario or design of the project uh, would definitely try to address uh, a mix of mitigation and adaptation results. And uh, given the fact that uh, GCF sometimes uh, struggling to establish or support uh, tangible adaptation projects, especially for the private sector projects, uh, definitely those who have uh, valid business ideas uh, addressing adaptation issues are more than welcome to provide their funding uh, proposals uh, to the Green uh, Climate Fund. Next slide, please. So this is a brief snapshot of the needs and uh, questions that are raised by the Green Climate Fund during the project structuring, review, uh, negotiating, and uh, finally approval. Uh, I would say uh, that the first thing that have to ha has to come to mind of any project developer with the Green Climate Fund should be related to the climate rationale. Projects submitted to the Green Climate Fund either have to provide tangible results of emission reduction, depending again on the circumstances and parameters of the funding proposal, and uh, adaptation outcomes increasing resilience of local people uh, suffering from climate effects of, uh, of uh, uh, detrimental effects of the climate change. Uh, there are many proposals, fantastic development proposals that I saw in my practice. Unfortunately, they were not eligible for the Green Climate Fund because they lack this climate rationale. And I may be repeating it. <laughs> A gazillion times, but climate rationale is the first thing. Until you de define exactly whether it's mitigation or adaptation projects, and whether the results or, uh, let's say, uh, activities of the projects are linked uh, um, in order to address specific barriers uh, and ultimately delivering results to overcome these barriers, uh, barriers uh, with the support of the Green Climate Fund. This so-called theory of change uh, definitely should be articulated uh, as a relatively brief statement, but nevertheless clearly articulated by the uh, funding proposals uh, during the initiation initiation stage. Um, there is quite uh, important part uh, related to the um, additionality of GCF funding. Again, as I mentioned, uh, GCF provides patient and concessional capital. Again, not many people will be uh, finding uh, ability, uh, an institution capable to provide a loan uh, for 40 years at 0% uh, to, let's say, to Mali. And uh, in that sense, uh, definitely GCF uh, funding is a unique proposition. But uh, in addition, uh, or as a flip side of that, we definitely should articulate in our funding proposals why GCF is needed. What are the specific barriers, how they're addressed by the concessionality of GCF money, how the results achieved, and in that sense, uh, uh, 
um, bringing to the green climate fund projects based on the principles of business as usual or acceptable to the commercial center let's say grid connected uh, solar power plants somewhere in india let's say where the tariffs uh, of uh, ipps are uh, quite low and definitely market is saturated by active private sector players without need of additional uh, concessionality GCF uh, tries to avoid uh, market distortion and in that sense uh, uh, question of additionality, why GCF money is needed, uh, what issues and barriers they address is, a, is in, another first thing that you, you have uh, clearly have in mind. Uh, country driven approach again this is a manifestation of the principle that uh, I was mentioning briefly and in that sense uh, your project or funding proposal that you are maybe have in mind as potential uh, uh, as potential um, applicant for the green climate fund funding should definitely be shared with a national uh, designated authority each country has a national designated authority especially developing countries and most of them are very active uh, receiving dedicated support through the readiness program to build their capacity and successfully support uh, from the ground uh, being in specific country projects or program uh, relevant for the climate uh, uh, priorities uh, outlined in the national determined contributions and similar uh, long-term strategies and similar strategic uh, uh provisions uh, made by the green uh, by the countries the uh, operational uh, part of this uh, country driven approach uh, is a non objection letter each and every funding proposal has to have this non objection letter and the sooner you get the better it is i mean it should be uh, presented with the initial submission uh, something that uh, would be signed by the uh, national designated authority based on the template uh, ndas are fully aware of this process and documentation that they need to approach but in some countries uh, the process is definitely taking time yeah, you have to educate uh, stakeholders uh, engage them through the main, meaningful conversation and try to get them on board with the support of the project not only in the form of non-objection letter but beyond that uh, again uh, gcf uh, uh, review and approval process is very mm, uh, is very challenging sometimes and we definitely uh, would not uh, or should not uh, disregard that, that important political support uh, from the country level um, overall uh, GCF is uh, assessing projects uh, along the six uh, investment criteria including impact potential uh, sustainable development potential paradigm shift uh, country needs country ownership effectiveness efficient efficiency and effectiveness these are the investment criteria each of uh, them deserves maybe another day of discussion uh, the specifics uh, that come from the practice as well as theoretical design of the investment framework of the green climate fund at this stage uh, i'm definitely uh, happy to outline these important things uh, uh, six investment criteria that will have to go and be presented through the entire set of the funding proposal including uh, and the, the template of the document the funding proposal itself and all its annexes to support uh, and uh, strongly articulate the reason uh, alongside all these uh, um, investment criteria uh, submitted uh, funding proposal is definitely uh, analyzed by the dedicated teams of professionals uh, within the public and private sector uh, uh, divisions and uh, in that sense uh, uh, fully uh, scrutinized, scrutinized uh, uh, in order to make sure that it is in compliance with the numerous uh, GCF uh, policies uh fiduciary standards uh, risk management uh, environmental social safeguards indigenous people uh, policy and uh, gender related uh, documents uh, gcf uh, documentation submission sometimes gets very complicated especially when uh, the parameters of the funding proposal translated into the legal documentation of the funded activity agreement 
which may easily exceed uh, several dozen pages and require dedicated support, uh, both from the operational financial teams of the project developer, as well as the legal team uh, who is capable to trans translate this uh, documentation part uh, into the workable and uh, ideally um, favorable for the project proposal uh, proponent uh, uh, contract. And overall, uh, this uh, funding proposal submission is, uh, um, as I mentioned, uh, is not a standalone document. You have all the templates and uh, um, formats on site, you can download them. Um, but the funding proposal itself, uh, with all the details, is just the tip of the iceberg. And the most important uh, part of the submission, of course, uh, uh, in addition to the FP text itself, are the, uh, the annexes. Uh, uh, feasibility study, financial model, project budget, uh, documents related to environmental social safeguards, uh, uh, env environmental social management framework or action plan. Again, depending on the project parameters, uh, these are the uh, these are the parts of the submission without uh, which uh, the project will not uh, move forward, uh, even if it has a non-objection letter. <laughs> of course, non-objection letter is the integral part of the submission so the sooner it is there the better it is uh, for everyone involved uh, in the process so let's switch to the next slide please this is a snapshot of the process uh, that uh, basically guides the preparation review and approval of the funding proposal at the Green uh, Climate Fund. The work uh, that is uh, being uh, presented by the project developer is uh, beginning sometimes way before the, the process starts at the developer level. And uh, the most uh, favorable uh, part uh, of the project initiation is uh, related to the country program. So if the country program indicates priority areas where specific funding proposal addressing and uh, uh, ideally uh, fully uh, reflect uh, the specific needs, uh, uh, that's something that would definitely be considered as very strong argument in the in favor of the funding proposal from the country ownership principles. Country program, um, in a short uh, description, uh, a set of funding proposals or project ideas that national designated authority in uh, cooperation with uh, key stakeholders or interested party, parties tries to develop, uh, develop in cooperation with the Green Climate Fund is, and with financial support of the Green Climate Fund and ultimately uh, present to the GCF as some sort of a roadmap to guide uh, GCF secretary as well as potential project developers where the priority areas where they have to dedicate their force and uh, attention. Uh, proposal generation, uh, this is uh, something that already was mentioning. Uh, we are talking about uh, ideation and I'm repeating again, climate rationale. That is something uh, that should be going through the funding proposal, six investment criteria, all the documentation, scientific evidence in the feasibility studies and definitely effective work of the dedicated teams. Uh, funding proposal with the GCF is uh, something that desperately needs buy-in from the senior management, political support sometimes uh, from the highest level of the country leadership. And in that sense, uh, uh, we definitely would not be complaining if these things are going as development uh, elements or, dimension, or dimensions of the funding proposal uh, for effective um, for effective uh, preparation. Um, after the funding proposal is uh, prepared, again, uh, based on the templates uh, and uh, uh, and annexes, uh, the entire package gets submitted uh, to the GCF uh, Secretariat. Again, as I mentioned earlier, GCF traditionally works and most of the projects come to it through the accredited entities. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, there are a few hundred of, hundreds of them, and uh, uh, in the preparation of the funding proposal, 
the, the potential developers should pay close attention to the fiduciary standards uh, and accreditation scope of the specific accredited entities they would like to engage. Uh, not all accredited entities are equal, and there are two critical or important dimensions that you have to keep in mind uh, in the accreditation scope of your future partner, your accredited entity. One is the project site, and project uh, uh, accredited entity should be uh, receiving appropriate accreditation either for micro projects, uh, which are um, up to 10 million US dollars of total funding, GCF and co financing. Small projects, up to 50 million US dollars of total funding. Uh, medium mid sized projects of 200 up to 250 uh, million dollars funding and large projects above uh, 200 uh, US dollars uh, uh, funding uh, total quantum funding. Uh, this is important parameter. Uh, if you bring a funding proposal uh, with uh, credit entities, I mean, say. Uh, 50 million US dollars or 60 million US dollars um, funding proposal with accredited entities which are accredited for micro projects, it will not be going forward. You will waste a lot of time, effort, and definitely uh, will be a bit disappointed. Uh, again, uh, preparation of the funding proposal is quite a tedious process. And losing these important uh, uh, elements uh, at the initial stage uh, creates a, a tremendous uh, disadvantage uh, to, to go forward. Another uh, project uh, dimension, uh, project uh, uh, accredited entities uh, uh, accreditation scope dimension is uh, the fiduciary standards. Uh, again, some accredited entities are accredited only for grants and cannot disburse loans or equity. And some ac uh, accredited entities uh, may have uh, uh, only uh, loan financing accreditation. So again, uh, in a hypothetical situation where a project developer is looking for equity stake funded by the Green Climate Fund goes uh, to GCF through, mm, uh, through, uh, through not appropriately accredited entities, this will be the same outcome. A project funding proposal will not be rejected, but they will be sent, it will be sent back for a review and adjustment alongside the accredited entities. Um, as I briefly was saying, uh, funding proposals and GCF uh, operation modalities are based on um, two main uh, subdivisions, public sector and private sector funding proposals. Sometimes the separation uh, of uh, these uh, divisional activities are a bit blurred and I saw in my practice many instances then, well, quite public uh, private sector early and oriented projects uh, ended up being this public sector um, division and uh, and vice uh, vice versa but as long as the uh, project is moving forward as long as the uh, results and fiduciary standards are properly answered uh, this is um, not a big issue in terms of uh, going forward and definitely uh, private sector facility and uh, division of mitigation and adaptation of the Green Climate Fund, which is uh, uh, working on the support of the public sector proposals, uh, work in cooperation, working in cooperation and uh, definitely benefit each other in terms of their knowledge of financial instruments, sectoral expertise, and ability to structure and negotiate uh, climate deals. After submission of the funding proposal uh, to the Green Climate Fund, we have uh, several uh, rounds of interdivisional reviews. Basically, the documentation submission is shared uh, at the internet, and uh, during the organized process of interdivisional review, all the divisions involved in the review and the uh, consideration of the funding proposals submit their comments and uh, for a series of dedicated sessions, uh, the funding proposals is being adjusted, all answers and uh, comments are being answered in order to make sure that particular elements of the submissions are properly answered uh, and comfortable for the secretariat who is uh, supposed to support this project. Uh, on one hand, playing the role of advocate uh, at the highest level form of uh, GCF, including ITAP and uh, board, GCF board. On the other hand, being some sort of uh, devil's advocate there, they will uh, ask you a lot of questions, uh, requesting a lot of additional information, and definitely anticipate effective cooperation uh, during submission and review processes. Uh, 
in my experience the good organized uh, good organized uh, funding proposals with uh, well uh, uh, well supported team of uh, developers um, is capable to deliver uh, the, the funding proposal internal review process within six months although this is something that is definitely requires a lot of uh, operational coherence knowledge experience support and uh, uh, relevant uh, relevant things like that for that uh, that is the process of the gcf internal review and approval that goes through several stages of uh, um, of um, climate investment committees uh, so far this is a specific uh, body within gcf that uh, is mandated to review and uh, give uh, go ahead or uh, reject uh, um, for proceeding uh, funding proposal submissions uh, and in ideal scenario, uh, Climate Investment Committee gives you a green light. Uh, again, a very specific system there that uh, checks uh, all the specific elements of uh, climate rationale, of the feasibility study, of uh, legal, uh, fiduciary, budgetary parameters of the funding proposal. And if things more or less uh, okay with uh, the, these the parameters of the Green Climate Fund policies, and again, uh, uh, the, the ideal funding proposals where things uh, are green from the first day uh, uh, are remain to be seen, I believe. A lot of things are work in progress during the preparation stage. But um, if uh, things more or less acceptable and some potential considerations of uh, reinforcing or safeguarding conditions, uh, Climate Investment Committee is ready to move ahead with uh, the um, this uh, next stage of the funding proposal review, which is independent technical advisory panel. ITAP is a very important stage where uh, the funding proposal is getting submitted to the group of uh, high profile technical specialists um, covering primarily different uh, result areas of uh, uh, relevant GCF uh, operational modalities, energy, transport, uh, forestry, agriculture, and so on and so forth. Uh, important thing that uh, ITAP, uh, without a positive uh, answer from uh, ITAP uh, during this stage, uh, funding proposal cannot uh, go to the next uh, level of review and approval. Uh, this is quite condensed period. Uh, funding proposal gets uh, submitted to ITAP. Uh, within a few weeks, uh, ITAP members give a list of questions to follow on with the funding proposal then the project preparation team on the credit entity side is going ahead with the presentation and during one hour call has to give uh, itab full set of details that would make uh, the itab members comfortable to give a thumbs up uh, for the funding proposal uh, and uh, proceed to the next stage and finally, uh, all funding proposals are approved by the GCF board. GCF board is a constituent body uh, comprised of 24 members, 12 from developing and 12 from developed countries who are involved in the review and consideration of the funding proposal. Uh, don't be misled by these numbers. Uh, each board member uh, is supported by the set of consultants, advisors, and other technical specialists that at some point in time will be enrolled in the review and consideration or uh, uh, commenting on the funding proposal. And definitely, uh, this is a very delicate stage where the FP document and legal contractual documentation may receive uh, conditions uh, which um, definitely on one hand, may be complicating the process of the project implementation. On the other hand, may have budgetary implications for additional financing required to um, to, to, to implement uh, specific components. And by the way, conditions also can come uh, from ITAP, although at this stage they are not formalized and not uh, integrated or can be integrated. But the, uh, but the final word in this set of conditions is uh, said by the board, uh, which uh, normally approves projects by uh, uh, unanimous consent. Uh, however, according to the rules and procedures of GCF, there are opportunities uh, uh, to make decisions uh, about the funding proposals, as well as other matters related to GCF operational work in the absence of consensus. 
So assuming again that things went well and you definitely uh, are welcome to check GCF board meetings at the Green Climate Fund website where specific agenda items are uh, dedicated to the review and approval of the funding proposal. And we'll give you another tip of the iceberg in understanding how things are debated, how things are discussed, and what are the key elements of political scrutiny and high-level scrutiny of the climate funding proposal at the Green Climate Fund. So please go ahead. Uh, all broadcasts of the Green Climate Fund board meetings are open to the public and can be downloaded. Uh, so feel free to find appropriate funding proposals that might be similar to the ideas that you have in mind and definitely uh, please uh, feel free to check how they are being uh, discussed uh, by the board next slide please so as you may guess <laughs> there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of elements uh, there are a lot of challenging uh, parts in the process uh, of the funding proposal and again, as I uh, said, uh, maybe uh, another <laughs> one more time, climate rationale is a thing that many funding proposals are struggling to establish. Not only dedicating that to a particular country Z or uh, area in that territory is um, vulnerable to the effects of the climate change. This is a pretty standard uh, uh, phrasing that uh, can be uh, obtained uh, with uh, uh, there's not so much work from uh, from googling it, but um, uh, but comprehensive comprehensive linkages of the climate rationale with the dedicated feasibility studies uh, that would uh, articulate uh, climate risks, climate needs, uh, baselines of the emission uh, emission scenarios. Uh, and uh, these are the these are the critical elements uh, that sometimes and many times even for the seasonal accredited entities is uh, is a challenging uh, part of the of the preparation. By the way, uh, recognizing that fact and uh, contributing to the capacity building, GCF has uh, dedicated financing resources for the project preparation. And uh, project preparation facility can give up to 1.5 million dollars uh, for the accredited entity to support uh, feasibility study, uh, consultants, uh, legal work, structuring, and other eligible costs uh, um, to make a good funding proposal uh, uh, eligible and uh, uh, answering all the, all the check boxes in the, in the review and preparation. And that's uh, what would be the best practice approach in my experience. Uh, this advanced uh, engagement of the Green Climate Fund, and again, this requires uh, close cooperation with, GC, uh, with NDA, is something that has to be uh, analyzed and potentially engaged if you feel like uh, resources or funding uh, on a grand basis uh, uh, terms are needed to support your funding proposal. Uh, next thing is again about the uh, the documentation, and I'm talking about specific elements of the FP uh, funding proposals here, which is theory of change, uh, log frame that links uh, outcome, outcomes with uh, activities and results uh, uh, of the project uh, funding proposal. And components, again, uh, funding proposal can be structured in a way that some of these parts are not maybe um, eligible for funding uh, but necessary from the point of uh, capacity building and uh, similar activities point of view. And articulating these components and presenting them as integral part and needed element of the submission is something that uh, have to be uh, analyzed and done well. So again, in that sense, consulting support, uh, experienced uh, uh, people who had uh, prior mm, uh, prior work uh, with the Green Climate Fund uh, and definitely in the engagement uh, where you have, uh, you can receive uh, guidance, appropriate guidance is something that in practice would be a good set of solutions for you to, to implement uh, in order to have good funding proposal preparation. And on the operational side, uh, last but not least, is definitely something that uh, we're talking about execution. Ideas now, they nowadays are free you can google them and find them quite easily but how to convert the ideas into the tangible action plan how to engage and bring 
appropriate resources, motivate people, and definitely lead them forward. This is uh, covered by execution. And in that sense, uh, dedicated team, uh, knowledgeable about different aspects and dimensions of the funding proposal. Political support uh, within the organization or outside of it. And, um, and uh, technical innovation, which is uh, not the uh, list and another last thing here. And uh, in that sense, uh, uh, I'm definitely happy to give maybe a small uh, uh, outlook for you uh, in connection with uh, the solutions that are being developed and already successfully implemented by the Ever City, uh, Ever City company. Our wonderful host here at the, at the COP Pavilion. Um, next slide, please. This is something that would uh, give you the sneak peek uh, as uh, the climate uh, solution system, project management system that is being developed by EverCity. Again, we are talking about uh, automated, structured, uh, standardized process, which can be easily replicated and definitely capture all the important elements of the funding proposal, not only at the stage of the design and uh, approval and review, but also at the stage of implementation. Again, implementation is a very important part. And uh, in that sense, uh, all these solutions that are provided by EverCity opening up uh, good opportunities uh, for those who are interested in engaging them to bring them uh, up to speed within their internal uh, management systems and definitely deploy them as a approach uh, to implement and structure and uh, implement uh, funding uh, proposals with the green climate uh, fund next slide please i'll stop here and uh, definitely as uh, uh, as uh, the presentation format today, uh, happy to answer all your questions, colleagues, as well as uh, hear your comments and observations. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, dear Andre, thank you for, for the great presentation. I think that was a very holistic uh, information that we heard today. So maybe you can share some of the practical cases from your experience, like uh, what was, you know, what, what were the unsuccessful examples? What were like declined by, you know, by the process and why? Just giving a few examples and maybe some of the, um, successful examples that were like uh, streamlined that made it the fastest to the uh, to the uh, you know to the execution and obtaining the funding from GCF. Thank you. <laughs> very, very good. Thank you, Alexey. Very good question. Uh, maybe many questions, and I'm risking to spend uh, another two hours of precious times of our uh, fabulous audience <laughs> explaining and discussing this exciting topic, but. Um, let me just come back to the idea that quite often uh, mentioned and repeated by GCF uh, management, board members, and stakeholders. Uh, GCF uh, is a plane that is being built on the go, uh, which is a kind of funny concept in aviation. <laughs> I definitely would not venture into boarding that plane <laughs> to become a guinea pig for the exciting flight. But uh, this is the reality of the, of the funding uh, process at GCF. Our organization is a startup, although quite massive startup in the, in the climate finance. Uh, again, five years or 10 years of operation is uh, nothing, especially if you take into account decades that uh, took uh, many other organizations uh, to uh, develop, uh, polish, and uh, effectively uh, maintain their internal project uh, review and support system. So in that sense, uh, even, let's say, a rejected funding proposal, and again, uh, don't get me wrong, uh, if you pick up some uh, broadcasts uh, of GCF uh, board meetings, you will find a lot of them. Not a lot, but some of them will, uh, unfortunately, uh, did not get this uh, support. 
uh, even that uh, outcome is is a positive result. So I would not say about the GCF projects as something of a failure. I would say something as a learning process that benefits uh, the project teams, GCF itself, uh, again, and uh, and the wider audience of potential stakeholders uh, who learn from the mistakes of others, who take them into account, and next time definitely uh, do the things uh, better. And uh, uh, in that sense, uh, again, as I would say, we can say uh, and mention every of the uh, more than 200 approved funding proposals as a success story. With some drama, with some uh, twists in the plot and not free from, well, uh, maybe as we take about global problems of mitigation and adaptation that we're trying to crack, it looks like a really small bickering about uh, a very low level of, uh, of corporate life. Uh, and again, I'm coming here to the, the, to the idea of big picture. Uh, we should not uh, lose the sight of the big things uh, uh, being eclipsed by the operational uh, challenges of, uh, of calls, of discussions and negotiations. So I repeat here that every, every funding proposal uh, GCF uh, approved is, uh, is a victory. Sometimes small in the global scale, but definitely tangible and valuable, uh, appreciated by people who are who are waiting for this support, who are relying on it sometimes, and who definitely get hope uh, to, 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 to proceed with mitigation and adaptation projects with GCF funding, unlocking good spirits and cooperation uh, from stakeholders, uh, uh, evidencing in the success of, of GCF funded support. Uh, some of the examples, uh, at least in my experience, that I can mention is definitely related to the least developed countries. Uh, um, exciting program uh, supported by the African Development Bank as a credit entity called uh, Desert to Power, where almost $1 billion uh, was catalyzed uh, to support energy transition alongside the Sahel area of the five least developed countries in the, in the African uh, continent. Again, uh, this uh, was something that was not free from uh, the process of uh, many months of review, negotiation, changes on the go. But ultimately, I'm definitely proud of this achievement uh, of our joint work with IFDP colleagues, with uh, people on the ground and good spirited people from the board and stakeholders who were unanimously supporting that and get, gave the green light to this uh, important uh, important initiative. So that's, uh, that's something that, uh, again, can be achieved by all of you sitting today and thinking about climate projects. $1 billion are reachable. Uh, again, as I, as I mentioned yesterday, United States announced uh, 3 billion addition to the GCF capital, and this money needs to be deployed. This money, uh, together with the replenishment, which are reaching uh, well, in total 12, uh, over 12 uh, billion US dollars, these are the money that are waiting to be deployed effectively. With the support of systems and solutions uh, like Ever City, be deployed uh, with the maximum result and definitely waiting your force, your um, inspiration uh, alongside innovative, transformative, and impactful climate projects. Um, thank you so much, Andre. Uh, just another quick question, and then I'll open the floor to the audience. Like, based on your experience, uh, which I, I mean, you know, regarding GCF, I think everyone is interested in, in how fast you can go through the process and what factors can really, you know, uh, accelerate the process. So, what do you think? Like, which are the fastest moving accredited entities? Are there any patterns? Like, are these like multilateral development institutions, or these are private banks, financial institutions, or these are maybe consulting companies that are also usually or sometimes are accredited entities? Or, so based on your experience, which types of accredited entities are the fastest moving? Uh, within the process. Thank you. Mm, uh, yes, very good question. And uh, uh, partners from UN system, UNEP, uh, UNGP can be mentioned as those who consistently deliver, again, maybe on a smaller scale and alongside uh, private sector focused funding proposals where mostly grants or highly concessional instruments are deployed. So in that sense, smaller scale funding proposal uh, 
in cooperation with organizations like UNEP, UNDP, or others, again, uh, feel free to 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 check uh, who got the most number of <laughs> accept uh, approved funding proposals. So these are the good indicators of uh, of work. But uh, again. Uh, the work and results are not uh, limited by the specific uh, timeline that is uh, reached as, uh, as a successful approval. Uh, uh, funding proposal is something that builds internal capacity to go ahead uh, for the accredited entities to submit next uh, funding proposal, a program that would cover not only isolated country, but several countries simultaneously achieving maximum results. And in that sense, um, there are no unique uh, uh, sorry, uh, standardized uh, boilerplate templates uh, that would be uh, that uh, that can be unlocked in this uh, expedited process. It's important, uh, but the sooner you start it, and the more things you do, the the easier it will be for you the next time. Thank you so much, uh, and I'm happy to give the floor to the audience. So uh, maybe you want to ask some 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 questions. So, Andre, yes, yes, please, and in introduce yourself. Please. Thank you very much uh, for this great presentation. Gives a great overview of what the GCF uh, can do for countries and uh, with projects and accompanying countries in that process. So, we've heard that um, like the business model and the financial model can be assessed to be sound by GCF or external partners who work with the GCF but I'm wondering a bit about how if like if there's something about the institutional setup in the countries that might impact project the project itself for it to have the go ahead or not and how is that assessed because we know that many developing countries maybe don't have the criteria that's required to access climate finance support. Um, so I'm just wondering a bit about that, if you could say a couple of words. Thank you. Indeed, absolutely. Internal capacity and knowledge within the stakeholders, especially at the country levels, uh, are critically important for the successful design and implementation of the funding proposal. In some countries, they are more advanced and definitely well equipped uh, with uh, proper personnel, knowledge, database prior achievements of the approved funding proposals in their territory and in that sense these are the low hanging fruits are good reliable potential partners uh, in some other countries uh, this uh, this uh, this is not accomplished yet and there are a few of them who are still not receiving any funding support from gcf at least uh, on the uh, for the funding proposals so in that sense um, uh, saying how and what are the factors are driving the decision making process within NDA is maybe beyond my uh, ability because as I mentioned country ownership principle is something that is being implemented and enforced and unless NDA whatever the internal processes and decisions gives you this non-objection letter this is one page document but still it's the tip of the iceberg and uh, behind that may be sometimes complicated and uh, I cannot exclude political wrangling among different competing authorities within the state structure of a particular state. Um, so, yeah, uh, until we get this document and NG is fully free to design the process of review and approval, it might be done from scratch, it might be done based on the already established and successful processes. Every country is unique in that sense, so uh, they are in the driving seat at this stage. So you have to be you have to be definitely prepared for education, and you mentioned rightfully the financial model. <laughs> this uh, this uh, combination of words uh, scares many bureaucrats. Uh, if you talk about IRRs, MPVs, Excel, and uh, rightful uh, educational effort, uh, appropriate uh, uh, engagement and uh, explanation is uh, is absolutely critical here. So again, I'm coming back and going in circles about this importance of uh, taking into account 
some sort of a black box projects maybe sometimes that are not clearly articulated outside of the NDA. But I'm sure many of them, or maybe most of them, have these processes in place. And again, uh, most of the countries received already GCF approval process where NDAs, local NDAs, were part of the uh, submission of the non-objection letter and therefore should be fully aware Good thing is that you can reach out to them again through the website of GCF where all the contact details of these focal points are mentioned. And feel free to talk to them preliminary about particular aspects of the funding proposals which are relevant. Thank you very much. Uh, if I may ask a quick follow up question, maybe I'll introduce myself this time uh, quickly. My name is Jean Pierre Sfer. I'm a consultant working for uh, Climate Focus. Um, my question is about blending um, the carbon markets and climate finance in some of these projects is that something that's uh, really apparent like using or leveraging carbon markets to finance projects as well um, carbon markets uh, um, difficult story GCF uh, I would say in internal debates about this topic uh, uh, sometimes they are considered uh, some sort of uh, uh, double yummy in terms of funding on one hand uh, uh, alongside the uh, gcf concessionality and on the other hand uh, through the well uh, carbon credits uh, that gcf would like to avoid i mean either you go through the carbon credits or uh, if you do it uh, uh, you do it on a pure concessional basis with uh, with gcf uh, only if you talk about concessionality However, having said that, uh, there are some projects that take into consideration potential um, potential carbon um, carbon uh, offsets, carbon emission uh, reductions, it knows outputs, and I would say there are solutions. Uh, again, uh, maybe uh, it deserves uh, specific consideration going forward, based on the details of the funding proposal and other things are relevant for that topic but yes uh, this is not something straightforward and goes well beyond my ability to dwell into that without having full set of details thank you very much thank you andre uh, are there any more questions by the audience please hi hello 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 hi uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Satom from the Maldives with my friend Niaz. Uh, we work uh, with, uh, we're, we're actually working at an NGO uh, called MSRO, uh, Maldives Space Research Organization. But uh, we've been exploring a few projects uh, in terms of the submission to the GCF fund. But uh, one thing uh, you mentioned just caught my attention. You mentioned that uh, scalability is a component that's considered when you know the proposals are being looked at. Has there been any incidents where um, an application has come in with support from more than one government? Or like, is there a process for this? Or uh, is there a special consideration giving the scalability of a project? Um, uh, as again, as I mentioned, one of the principles is open and cooperation approach of the structuring of the funding proposal and GCF. And if there, there's specific engagement uh, maybe not from the government per se, but uh, government-sponsored government organization who is providing technical expertise, resources, uh, financial co-financing co uh, uh, package. Uh, I think that uh, there's no particular issue here. We are addressing uh, global problems. We cannot divide ourselves uh, because, well, some uh, members of the team have different nationalities or affiliation. Uh, it will not benefit uh, neither our planet nor specific country. And that approach, I think, uh, consistently being supported. And uh, you, know, you can, again, see all the co-funding partners uh, and in many cases find this state-sponsored uh, organizations. Some of them are accredited entities of GCF. Thank you. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, dear participants of the um, GCF uh, Funding Opportunities Workshop. Uh, we will be uh, happy to continue this conversation with uh, you and Andre, and please bear with us today. We have some really exciting sessions covering green debt innovations, covering carbon markets liquidity, covering digital MRV, and more. So bear with us, and thank you for your attention. Thank you.